Hey everyone, Rogold here, and today the Division 2's Year 5 Season 2 apparel event titled Nexus has officially kicked off, and with it comes some pretty sweet looking items. This apparel event definitely has some ties or at least inspirations from that kind of cyberpunk theme. It's pretty cool and different from anything we've seen in the Division before. Now this event works the exact same way as apparel events have in the past, in which every player gets one free key to use upon logging in during the event, and if you own the premium track for this season, you also get an additional three. And so, what I figured I would do today is provide you all with a guide on my preferred and one of, if not the fastest, SHD level farming methods in the game right now in order to get your keys done quickly for this event. And in general, since I didn't do this at the start of the season, this will also serve as a good general XP guide for Year 5 Season 2, as it works great across the entire game. And as a bonus, if you're watching this video when it first airs, the reanimated global event is live right now as of October 17th. It will run for two weeks, and it pairs right in with what we're going to do here. So if you're around when it's live, then you can incorporate that in for even more rewards. So hopefully that sounds good. If you want more breakdowns and guides like this for The Division 2, then consider clicking that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it, but let's get right to this. Alright, so if you watched my XP farming guide for Year 5 Season 1, then this will be similar. However, there are a few more specialized elements and a few areas that I've refined in order to get way more return on XP for the time you spend, basically making this whole thing way more efficient. So because of that, I am going to suggest a few specific things. However, do keep in mind that you can take the principles of what I show here and the general framework of what we're doing and apply it to other builds, playstyles, methods. So don't feel too locked in if you don't like what you're seeing in the video. I'm just showing you what works best for myself and what will get you a lot of keys per hour. First, let's talk about the build that you're going to want to put together to take on this farming method. Now, keep in mind that this is tunable. There are a few different places where you could swap out gear pieces and do a few little tweaks. But for the most part, this is what you're going to want. So this is the overview. We're doing a hotshot sniper determined one shot build. I'm sure you've seen some variation of that before. And you'll see shortly how this pairs super well with the general method and route that we're going to be taking for this XP farm. As for weapons, the only really important component here is your primary, and you're going to want to get a high damage marksman rifle. If you have the White Death named Sniper, that one works exceptionally, but if you don't, then just another similar one in that category. And it is imperative that you get the Determined Talent on there. For the gear, you're going to want four pieces of the Hotshot gear set. This pairs right with marksman rifles. It deals with headshots, and Determined does as well, and you'll see how that all kind of fits in shortly. Leave the chest piece and backpack slots open. For the chest piece, you're going to want to get the Chain Killer with perfect headshots. Headhunter, or you can do a similar sniper-based brand that also has the regular version of Headhunter. And for the backpack, I'm using the gift named Providence Backpack with Perfect Vigilance. Again, you can use that or something that also focuses around headshots or snipers that has the Vigilance talent. All across your gear, you're going to want to spec fully into headshot damage everywhere you can. Your skills are not going to be used too often based off of the directives that we're going to apply, and we'll go over that shortly, but it doesn't hurt to have a Revive Hive on hand. And you are going to want to use the Sharpshooter Specialization. This gives you the uh, good scope with headshot damage to put on your sniper. It also gives you an extra inherent headshot damage boost from the tree, so be sure to have that on. All right, well now that we have gone over the build, let's talk about a few other things you need to do before getting into the farm itself. The first is your world difficulty. Now, I always stress this is that you don't want to overtune your world difficulty to the point where it's going to impact your efficiency, right? If you're somebody who plays on hard or challenging and you try and pump it up to heroic just to get the extra XP, but it then means that you're dying way more often than you would otherwise, then that is not worth it because you're missing out on all of that time and experience every time that you die. So if you can handle it, I definitely do recommend heroic. You will get the most reward out of that. And with this build and farm specifically, you shouldn't be getting hit too much if you're able to hit those shots consistently, but again, if it's too much for you, then turn it down. What you are going to want to do is turn on all five directives. Now, this might sound scary, especially if you don't usually play with directives. However, I promise you that the five directive selections that we have in Season 2 synergize perfectly with this build, meaning the way that you play a hotshot determined build really isn't impacted whatsoever by any of those directives on the list. You are going to need to pop an add or two now or then with your pistol to get ammo. You do want to play a bit more passively so that you can reserve those armor plates. And as I mentioned before, you are going to need to be more conservative with when you use your skills because we do have the cooldown one on there. 
but the upside is that you're getting so much more experience for every activity you do with these on, and it's just going to increase the rate at which you're earning these keys so dramatically. So highest world difficulty you can handle, all five directives, and then if it is active, again, if you're watching this video when the reanimated event is live, this is super fortunate that it pairs exceptionally with a headshot sniper build, and so if you turn reanimated on and just have it going while you're doing this farm, you're basically going to be earning double rewards with all the global event stars that you earn to be able to spend on those caches, so absolutely absolutely make sure you do that. All right, now getting to the farm itself, if you watched my year five season one XP farm guide, then this is the part that is going to sound pretty familiar because we are still going to go after public execution activities out in the open world. After the rework last season, these are simply the best ones to go after as far as the time it takes for you to complete them, the XP that they reward you with, they're simply better than all the other alternatives. In my opinion, once you get all your world settings tuned and you're ready to go, the first place that you should look is the West Potomac Park zone right around the Washington Monument control point. Very frequently, you can find yourself with two, three, maybe sometimes even four public executions right in this little area that you can just run between, and that is a great way to kick off your farm. After that, feel free to check if any of repopulated in that same area, but then you can also just scan the overall map. Last season, I was a bit more resistant to this, but after trying it out when season two launched, you can actually get a pretty good efficiency rate. If you travel around, you figure out which ones are close to fast travel points. And there are certain areas like in the top left up by Dark Zone West, there was one time where I was able to run back and forth between two spawning public executions, I want to say a good three, four times in a row. So you can get a really good cycle and flow by traveling around the map and getting these done. And maybe then by the time you feel like you've depleted them all, then you can go back and look at the West Potomac Park zone and you'll see that a few more have spawned there. But I do think that is a really good place to start. In case you haven't done one of these activities before, I will show you a quick demonstration. It's very simple. When you show up, there's going to be a wave of enemies alongside two hot hostages. All you need to do is take out those enemies that are already there. Once you do, there will be one reinforcement wave that comes from a fixed spawn point for each location. So the more you do them, you'll become more comfortable and familiar. You take out that one reinforcement wave. And once you're done with that, if you're running on heroic with all five directives, you will get more than 500,000 XP. Again, for just that one activity that can be done in well under a minute. And as I said, the more you do this, the more comfortable you get with these specific spawn points, you will just become faster and faster at it. And before you know it, you'll have that really great efficiency and farm going. If you end up scanning your map and you see that there are no real ideal public executions that are available, propaganda broadcasts are a great alternative. They do take slightly longer and they do reward you with a bit less experience, but they're still worthwhile, like I said, if there's no good other options. And additionally, you can certainly do other nearby side activities to those public executions that you're at. Like one time I did a public execution and then there was an elite territory control right next to me. So I took that out. Then a resource convoy walked by and I got that. That is still going to be very efficient and worthwhile for you to do. But for the most part, travel around the map as quick as you can to those public executions, take them out and you'll be on the right track. And that is it, my friends. That is my guide and recommendation for the best method to farm experience in year five season two for the division two and how to get quick keys for the Nexus apparel event. If you have not previously played with a hotshot determined sniper build like that, then using that specifically might take you a little bit of time to get used to. It will probably take you a good hour or so to do some of those public executions and learn some of the spawn points, get more comfortable with that flow. But trust me, in no time, you'll be knocking these out and racking up those keys for the apparel event. And one last reminder, you can run other builds, right? I don't want to make it sound like this is only achievable with the hotshot build. Just keep in mind that you will likely want to turn off some of those directives to compensate because some of them do become more punishing with different play styles. But once you do that and you find a good world difficulty, public executions are still going to be a really great way to farm. Like I said, though, if you can pull off the hotshot build, however, this build in particular and the setup of this farm is going to be one of the most efficient methods in the game to rack up those SHD levels. But my friends, that is just about going to do it. Let me know your thoughts on everything in this guide. Have you used this specific method in the past? Do you have any tips or recommendations? recommendations that might help people get more acclimated to it. And what are your thoughts on the Nexus event overall? I want to hear everybody's opinions down below. But that's all I've got, folks. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Rogue Gold. Ow.